folks, Jason Painfully Honest Tech here, back to discuss this brand new Samsung uh, folding event. Uh, we've unfolded the, the fold Z3 and Z3 Flip or Flip 3 or something like that. The Z Fold 3, the Z Flip 3, as well as the watch and some headphones. So let's just go straight through what Samsung talked about today, and then we will uh, maybe give a little bit of a, an, an impressions of the event. First thing they talked about, the watch, which is going to run for the first time, and this is kind of cool because this has been one of my bummer uh, sort of things since the Samsung watches came out. They're actually going to run both Tizen and Wear OS, which is Google's watch uh, operating system. So that's going to be kind of cool because it not only means that uh, you're going to have some expanded capabilities in terms of uh, getting together with the Google services, but it also means that you're going to um, you're going to be able to use the Samsung watches with other phones which is cool because there really aren't that many watches and the Samsung watches have generally been pretty good. So we've got that. Um, it also, and, and a bunch of health features. They went over a bunch of health features, but the body composition measurement feature was one that really intrigued me. At the end of the day, uh, this is a feature that I don't think the Apple Watch has, as far as I know. It's just a good way of uh, sort of measuring your overall sort of fitness and health. So I'm I'm excited to see what that's all about. It's going to be available on the 27th. I believe you can pre-order everything right now on Samsung's website. I'll leave a link to Samsung's website down in the uh, description below so that you guys can go and check that out. But the watch looks good. It's um, It looks like a watch. Uh, it's circular. It's not fancy. It, it There's not a whole lot of bells and whistles on it. It looks like a watch. The OS looks like now it's a little bit more streamlined, and you can uh, – you can – Match it more with the uh, with the aesthetics of your phone in terms of the UI and that kind of thing. Gone are the little dials that were there before. So the watch looks like it could be a winner for Samsung. I don't believe they gave a price on that, but the price will be on the website. So <laughs> that'll tell you. The Galaxy Z Fold 3 and the Galaxy Z Flip 3. Now, on first glance... They are cosmetically the same. They didn't show any of these phones like physically in people's hands. Everything looked like it was somewhat, um, somewhat CGI'd, but cosmetically they looked just about the same as the previous models. There are some differences that might make a difference to you. Uh, the Z Fold 3, they've worked really hard to get the front screen to be more usable. I guess they found that a lot of people are using the front screen as much, if not more than they use the unfolded screen. So now it's got 120 Hertz display. It's got Gorilla Glass uh, Victus on the front, which I think the last one had too. But overall, the whole uh, the whole front screen is is supposed to be more user friendly and easier to to get a hold of. Once they opened the Galaxy Z Fold three, that's where we got some of the stuff that we've been looking to get. I think people have been wanting to get for quite some time, and the, the here here they are. So one of those things is water resistance. I'm going to go in order that I think is you know most important. With the last one being the most important, water resistance on the phone. A big deal. It's IPX8 rated, which, as if I recall correctly, means that it's okay to like splash it, but it's not, you can't dunk it in water. You can't swim with it. You can't do any of those kinds of things, which for a phone that has a lot of moving parts and seams and that kind of thing is, is, an, is an achievement. So I'm glad that it, that gives the consumer a little bit more confidence in buying the phone and knowing that it's not going to get destroyed if they accidentally like splash water on it while they're brushing their teeth or something. The next thing that I thought was really cool, and actually this is something that I think the smartphone world has been waiting for for quite a long time. We haven't seen it, and now we have, or now we will, I guess. That is under the screen camera, under the screen camera. So the way that they explained it was the camera will live, the, the front facing camera, or the camera that's inside the unfolded screen, will live underneath the screen. They figured out a way to put pixels over top that. But then when you want to use the camera, those pixels will go away and you'll be able to then uh, see the lens, take pictures, do video calls, whatever it is that you're doing. And uh, yeah, for those of you who've been wanting to get rid of the hole punch, for those of you who've been wanting to get rid of the notch, here we are. We've got a fully uninterrupted display that can then interrupt itself with this under the screen 
camera. So that to me is is a very cool development, and I'm looking forward to see how it works in practice. As the the whole concept is great, how does it work in practice? Last but not least, with the Z Fold Three. Something that everybody is clamoring for, but we were all wondering, would the technology of the foldable screen allow for this to happen? The Samsung Z Fold 3 has S Pen support. S Pen support for the, for the Galaxy Z Fold 3. They figured out a way to make that screen rigid enough to be able to do this. They've both altered and, and improved the screen technology so that it's rigid enough, but they've also altered the S Pen. Now, there is no silo for the S Pen to go inside the phone. The S Pen, I'm assuming, will be a separate accessory that you buy, uh, and and so that's kind of a drag. We'll get to prices here in a little bit. The prices are, are a place where I think we really have to have some discussion uh, about whether or not these phones are viable in the larger marketplace, but we'll leave that for last. Right now, the S Pen will be a separate accessory that now has a, a sort of spring-loaded rubbery nib on it so that it won't be as hard and it won't have as much risk of, you know, digging into the screen itself. And they've showed a whiteboard that's shareable between all the other people that are on your meeting. It's They showed a lot of different things with the S Pen and a 7.6-inch screen on the inside of that phone, which means uh, that's, that's a good size uh, screen to have to use the S Pen on. So... I'm excited for that. If you've watched the channel for a while, you know that I've always been a big S Pen fan. We are not getting a Galaxy Note phone this year. And with this development, I'm not sure if we ever will get another Galaxy Note phone. I guess they're going to wait and see how the S Pen and how the Fold 3 sells before they really ditch the Note series. But this is kind of the place where... Everybody thought maybe Samsung was going. Will they bring the S Pen to the foldable phones? And will that mean the demise of the Note series phones? At this moment, they did bring the S Pen. So only time will tell if the Note survives. One of the questions that I had about the inside of the phone, about the uh, when the screen is unfolded, and because we were seeing sort of renders of the phone more than we were seeing the physical phones themselves, it was impossible to really know. But one of the things that I was really curious about was, is there still kind of that gutter in the middle of the screen? Now, they, they have the digitizers for the S Pen are sort of one on each side, and they've got some algorithmic stuff that goes across that border between the two. But it did not show if there's still that that fold that's visible on the phone's screen whenever you open it up. I would, I hope not. That would that's one thing that people have uh, not been too happy about with the folds up to this point. And if they were able to get rid of it, that's great. But if you're using the S Pen and you have to like write across and that that will be really annoying. So I couldn't really get a sense of whether or not that gutter in between the two, the fold of the screen was still there. So that's one concern that I have. The frame of both phones is aluminum. I'm hoping that the build is somewhere in the, in the ballpark of the Galaxy S21 Ultra, which was the strongest glass phone <laughs> I have ever used. It was a beast. The frosted glass on the uh, on the S21 was a fantastic feel and very, very sturdy in the times that I dropped it in other things. Never really, uh, never really had any fear of dropping it, which hasn't always been the case for Samsung phones. Then they moved on to the Z Flip 3. They didn't spend as much time on this. I think that most of the things that that worked with the Z Fold sort of carry over to the Z Flip 3, although there is no S Pen support. The Z Flip is more of a standard kind of phone experience. You know, it's a it's a clamshell that opens up. One thing that they were able to do is, is enlarge the screen on the front of the Z Flip 3 in order to be able to use that screen for something more than the time. So you can use it as a shutter for your camera. You can use it as a viewfinder. You can use it for notifications. You can respond to your notifications straight from the, uh, the front of the screen using Bixby, which I, Bixby sighting, we haven't seen Bixby for quite some time. So we have a Bixby sighting in, in here, and supposedly Bixby is 35% faster than Bixby ever was. So if you're a Bixby fan, rejoice. Uh, Bixby is faster than ever and, and, still, and still exists, which, you know, we weren't, really, uh, we weren't really sure about. Overall, both of these phones, as I said, 
cosmetically look pretty much the same. The color palette is different, of course, but cosmetically, build-wise, they still look pretty much the same. And by virtue of that, they're both still pretty thick boys. Uh, that was one thing that people have complained about about the foldable phones is that while it's cool that they fold out, it's they're much thicker to carry around when they're folded. So they're still pretty thick. Uh, Samsung didn't mention anything in the event that had anything to do with if they were thinner or anything like that. So if they are, uh, it's it's not clear to me at this point. Both of these phones are available for pre-order right now. Uh, they will be released on the 27th of this month of August, 2021. And here's where we get to the place where we need to pause and think. The Z Fold 3 starts at $1,799. The Z Flip 3 is $999 to start. One of those prices is reasonable. One of those prices is still well outside the the possibilities for the mere mortal smartphone purchaser. $1,799 is a better price by a couple of hundred dollars than what we've seen in the past, uh, but it's still way too much for the average person. You have to be a really enthusiastic smartphone enthusiast to, sp to spend $1,800 on a phone or $17.99 uh, doesn't mean that much to you in the larger scheme of things. For the average person who walks into a store and wants to buy a phone, I think they're going to see that $17.99 price tag on the fold and say, what else do you have? And maybe then they'll go to the flip and the flip will be where they go. There, There is a market for the fold, and I do think that they're getting better with the price. But I have gone on record saying that if they don't get the price closer to $1,500, then it was going to be a really difficult sell for most people other than the most enthusiastic smartphone enthusiasts. And so $300 above that $1,500 point, I think is going to make it a really difficult sell. Now, I don't know how many, how many phones Samsung is expecting to sell in terms of the fold. I think they'll sell a decent number of the flips, but the fold is really where the mo the coolest stuff is. I honestly don't know if they're going to sell a lot of those phones. Now, they also did release a new set of in-ear headphones. I'm going to do a separate review on those. I'm not going to talk about those too much, just so this video doesn't get too long. But my takeaways from this event are, A, they've improved the technology for sure. They've added features that everybody's wanted, and they've really thought a lot about how to make these devices more useful on their own and how to make these devices more useful in sort of an ecosystem of devices. So those are good things. But then price-wise, the flip is in a better place, but the fold is still way outside the bounds of what I think is necessary for this to be a viable commercial option. This is still going to be very much a niche phone. Maybe that's what it's supposed to be, but I don't see them flying off the shelves when they come out here uh, in a couple of weeks. You let me know what you think down in the comments below. Did you watch the event? Are you excited about any of these things? Did anything about what they announced today change your mind one way or the other about whether or not these folding phones were viable options for the smartphone consumer in general? Looking forward to hearing your comments down in the discussion below. Let me know, and we'll have a boisterous discussion. Otherwise, thanks so much for being here. Once again, my name is Jason, sometimes known as the JTL. This is Painfully Honest Tech. Tech's so honest it hurts. Until the next time, I am out.